Hi, and thanks for joining us in this next in the series of videos on the 2D frame analysis module in the Structural Engineering Library. If you're just joining us, this video is for the purpose of reviewing analysis results. And just to refresh, uh, we've constructed a single bay braced frame model. We've supported the model with boundary restraints. We've modeled member end fixities and releases. We've assigned materials and sections to all of the members, applied some loads, manipulated our load combinations uh, to suit, and at this point I would just remind, uh, remind you that there is an option to either auto calculate a 2D frame analysis module and that will trigger a recalculation after every change during the modeling process. So as we mentioned in an earlier video, it may be desirable during the modeling process to deselect the auto calculate option. And if that is the case, then you'll have a calculate button that you can click to initiate um, a recalculation as desired. So since we've just gotten to the point where we've finished our model setup and uh, load combinations, I would just remind you that if you have deselected that auto calculate option that in order to get correct and current results you will in fact have to click the calculate button. Also at this point you may find it more convenient to just choose that auto calculate option and if your model is small enough and if your changes are few enough from here on out uh, that may suit you just fine. In terms of reviewing the analysis results, and I'll draw a distinction between analysis and design because we'll come back and talk about steel design as a separate topic, but in terms of looking at analysis results, one of the things that I like to do first is just go to the sketch tab. This is a graphical representation of the model and it's deflected uh, or deformed shape if that option is chosen down here. Uh, in the display selections option. There's a magnification factor that can be applied to that to increase or decrease the amount of displacement or deflection that's shown on on the drawing. I'd also point out that there are options to display the joints or hide the joints and associated with that selection is an option to choose joint labels on or off. So our number one for instance displays or does not display depending on the set setting there and then the restraints option can be used to toggle the display of the nodal restraints on and off. Likewise we can choose to display the members or not along with their labels and if we actually want to we can take a look at the assigned section label. Remember that for the beam we chose to actually assign the section label itself whereas for the other members in the model we chose the group name and that's why we see text for the section indicator on the other members in the model. There are also options to show the applied loads and we can then select whether or not we want to see applied joint loads, applied distributed loads, whether or not we want to see the values indicated or not and if we wanted to show of member point loads if any had been applied to the model. At the far right is the load combination drop down list box. This is where we can select the load combination that we want to see the deformed shape for. So right now we're looking at a deformed shape that's due to the application of the applied dead loads in addition to the member self weight assigned in the downward direction with a factor of one. We can use this drop down list box to take a look at other uh, loading conditions somewhat off the shared region here. So I'll just choose one that includes both uh, dead load and a lateral wind load. And now we can see that there's a slight displacement of the node up here at the upper left hand corner and that there's some uh, displacement of column A because we've applied a small lateral load at nodes two and three. So I like to use the sketch just sort of as a gauge to make sure that things appear reasonable, that continuity seems to be as we would expect it to be, that members such as the braces uh, do show some deflection and that would be entirely due to the self-weight because there are no um, 
no applied loads directly added to those members. I like to make sure that the model appears to be supported correctly and just in general that it uh, is connected and behaves the way that I would expect it to. At this point what I'll do is drop back to the results tab. There are quite a few sub options here. Uh, they're explained in, in more detail in the user's manual, but I'll just highlight them for you and show you that when the extreme values tab is selected, you have the option to look at a joint displacements and reactions sub tab. When this sub tab is chosen, we see a list of all of the joints in the model and then indications of the extreme positive and extreme negative displacements in the X and the Y directions as well as the extreme rotations uh, about the Z axis for the named joint. And then continuing over to the right we see the extreme X and Y reactions and the extreme Z reaction which remember would be a, a moment reaction so units are indicated as kip feet for that one. This column is blank for us because we have no uh, joints that are uh, receiving any moment because we pinned all the members in the model. And also notice that this column is blank because we have assigned all of the members, uh, all of the nodes in this model as fixed against rotation in the Z direction. So there, there are by definition no rotations to any of the nodes about the Z axis in this particular model. The next sub tab is called member forces. When you select this tab it shows a listing of all of the members that are in the model and then it shows the extreme positive and the most negative if it exists. In this case it never does go negative but uh, the extreme positive and negative axial forces and the location along the member measured from the eye end or the starting end at which that extreme uh, axial force was found to exist. The extreme bending moment and the location at which that extreme value was found to exist. Um, I would add that for our members A and C, which are the columns in this model, uh, there is no bending moment anywhere along those members because the joint uh, or the member end fixities were all set to pin, so nothing's getting cranked into the columns that way, and there were no loads applied between the nodes, so there are actually no moments in those columns. Notice that uh, the program also indicates the associated load combination that creates the extreme value that it's reporting. So uh, it can make it very convenient to see what is actually driving those extreme values into the members. At the right hand side of this table we see the extreme shear values both in the positive and the negative sense and the location along the member at which those extreme uh, shear forces were found to exist. The next tab over is joint displacements and reactions. So this is set up on a load combination basis. If we expand one of the load combinations we can see that uh, secondary to the load combination list is a listing of each of the joints in the model. And then as we move over we can see that the table reports the joint displacements in the X and Y directions uh, as well as a Z rotation in units of radians if one existed for each of the named nodes. And then continuing over to the right we see a summary of the reactions for the named joints. So we can see that joints 1 and 4 in this model both experienced an X and a Y direction reaction but no Z direction reaction and that again is consistent with the pinned ends in our model. If we move over to the member end forces this list is again based on a load combination basis but as we expand this list instead of seeing joints named we now see members named. So for each of the load combinations we see a full listing of all the members in the model and for the named member we can see a report of the axial load, the shear, and the bending moment that was found to exist at the I end of the member and the same at the J end of the member. So these are member end forces.
The last sub-tab under Results is called Member Details, and here we start with a listing of the load combinations. Within each load combination, we can drill into a particular member in the model, and as we expand that list, what we see is slices along the length of the member at small increments all the way to the end of the member, so they run from I to J, and at each one of those slices we can see a report of the axial load in the member, the shear force in the member, and any bending moment in the member, as well as a reporting of the deflection of the member, and I would just note here that this is a deflection that is relative to the member ends. In other words, it's not an overall drift or a total displacement, but instead it's a displacement from the straight line cord connecting the two deflected locations of the end nodes of the named member. So it's a relative deflection. Okay, so that's a full look at everything that's available on the results tab. We've seen the sketch tab. Now what I'd like to do is just uh, finish up by taking a look at the diagrams tab. The way the diagrams tab works is that we can select a load combination of interest and a member of interest. So for example we might choose the load combination that looks at dead load, uh, snow load, and member self weight, and we might look at member B which happens to be our beam in the model. Now we can either take a look at numerical values by coming down and taking a look at this section here where we can read axial forces, maximum and minimum in the locations at which they were found to occur, shear forces, moments, and deflections, or we can look at things in a graphical sense. So in the upper left hand diagram we have the axial force shown for this member. So this is indicating a magnitude of negative 1.2 uh, kips of axial force along the full length of that member. Here we can look at a moment diagram. So we see a graphical representation of the beam indicated here and then we can see bending moment diagram indicated due to dead and snow and member self weight and the maximum comes up at about 105 here we can read the actual value of 103 and change. In the lower left hand corner we have a diagram that represents the shear force from starting end to ending end of the member and that looks consistent with the load condition that we've selected dead and snow and self weight. And then finally in the lower right hand corner we have a graphical representation of that relative deflection um, shown with respect to the member and here we can see consistent with what we'd expect for the uniform load that's been applied to that member we have a maximum deflection that occurs at midspan and the magnitude of that deflection is somewhat less than 0.58 and here's the numerical value minus 0.56 inches again all due to the selected load combination. Now at this point I'd also like to add that if we come back to the Joints and Loads tab and then come to the Joint Loads and Results tab, we'll be able to see that we now have some calculated results for the selected joint. So this is just another way of looking at uh, some results, in this case specific to joints. For instance, we could come to joint number three and then scroll down through the list of load combinations and then read across and find displacements and reactions associated with that joint. If we picked one of our supported joints, now we'd be able to see displacements all set to zero, obviously, and reaction values for each load combination. Similarly, if we come to the Members and Loads tab, we can now come to the Member Forces sub-tab and select a member of interest from the list a load combination of interest from the load combination list and then we can take a look at uh, forces both end forces at the I and J end for axial shear and moment 
as well as forces at section locations measured along the length of the member starting at the I end and working our way toward the J end. So axials, shears, and moments reported for the selected member. So just another way of taking a look at some analysis results from the 2D frame analysis module. The next step will be to talk about specifics of steel design which will include establishing some design parameters and getting meaningful steel design results out of the model and we'll tackle that in our next video. So thanks very much and have a great day.